I always I always had that as an excuse. But mm -hmm. you know, I just I was young, I just wanted to live it up. Um I was in I was working as a bartender at the time and the lifestyle as a bartender in New York is quite crazy. The hours four or five nights a week. You're working late hours. But on your days off is when you go out. That's just part of the industry. You go out, you meet other bartenders, so on and so forth. So when you're not in the bar, you're in the bar. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, people are like, what do you mean by that? But when you're not in the bar, when I'm not at work, I'm in the bar as well. Rarely had nights off. And that's when my, I suppose my drug, my drug addiction started. Now, did I think I was an addict then? Definitely not. I, I mm -hmm. thought everyone else was doing it. But what the, what the sad thing was, I was a silent user. So I would use with, with friends and new people I'd meet. But there was a lot of times I'd be using and no one else would know I was using. Yeah. Do you get me? Because I, I, yeah, I had... Yeah. I had quite a high tolerance with, um, I won't say with alcohol, but definitely with drugs. I, 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 could, I could hide it very well. So do so, you mean that you were using, so everyone goes to the toilet together. Yeah. Uh, they come out, you go back in on your own. Or do you mean that you were using yeah. like at home? So it started off with me. I'd go to the, I, I, I would take drugs. I'd buy drugs on my own. I, I, I would share, but I would be going in on, right, going okay, the bathroom yeah. on my own, going in and using okay. on my own. Now, fast forward, and we get to this, fast forward a year or two, I was using at home, yeah. alone, mm -hmm. didn't need to go out to use. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, there's quite a build-up to that. So, yeah. it kind of started like that, and, um, and then I was dabbling in, like, um, a bit of modelling, and I was getting uh, casted for different reality TV shows. So, there was always different distractions, right? There was always something going on in New York. It's a very fast-paced uh, yeah. lifestyle especially as a bartender and you're making quite a lot of money. And then I went out to the nightlife scene and a lot of people who follow me now and they know me as Cormac or Cormac, as they call me in America, promoter, party guy, promoter. If you go to New York, you go out with the Irish guys and me. That was it. So that's what, that's where I built my profile off was being a New York uh, promoter. And then obviously that just like went from bad to worse because mm -hmm. it was such, I didn't really work for anyone. I was kind of doing my own thing. We were, working for the people who were throwing the parties but really what are you doing you're just bringing a bunch of people into the club selling tables and you're drinking and you're doing drugs well, that's yeah. what i was doing not everyone was doing it that's what i was doing and i i was obsessed with it so going back to the movies i was in my head i was becoming those guys in the movies right the main guy center of attention doing all the drugs being around all the women that, that's what i felt i was so yeah it, it was crazy like looking back at it now people like People probably think, oh, what's this guy talking about? But this is what I had in my head. This is who, yeah. who I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, so I did that for about two years. And in the space, I suppose about a year into my um, career, we got it as a nightclub promoter. I got, uh, I got casted for Love Island USA. And then um, that happened season one. Not a lot of people know this. Like, I'm, it's weird because an Irish guy being on Love Island USA, it doesn't make sense, right? But it happened. It happened. Yeah. I was living there. <laughs> But funny, funnily, funny enough, I actually got asked to go to do the UK one. Um, I forget what season was. Season six, Molly Mays year. Molly Mays year. Yeah. So I was asked to do that one as well. But it just, same producers, it was like, nah, you live in America, go do that yeah. one. But I remember, like, I was using quite a lot. Like, I was, I was partying, taking coke three to four ni nights a week. Yeah. Um, so pretty heavy, like, you know. Yeah. Um, but I remember I got casted for that, and I ended up getting it, obviously. But I remember like doing the um, psych test and the personality test and everything. And, you know, you sit down with a psychiatrist and they try to basically break you down. So they, at least they know who you are. They know you're stable enough to want TV. And I lied through the whole thing, like about like suicidal thoughts, um, using everything like that. Because eventually, you know, I, I, I had like, of course, I, I yeah. came close to taking my life there at one stage. And I was struggling big time, but on my own, on my own, no one knew, no one knew. So that was, but I felt like, okay, I'll get on this reality show, right? That'll fix everything. But in fact, it actually made it worse, made it worse. Because I suppose I went from being known around New York City to being known around, I won't say around the world because it wasn't as big as the UK one, but being known a lot more. Yeah, I wasn't just more than percent yeah. I wasn't just a nightclub promoter now. I was a nightclub promoter who's on a reality show. TV, yeah, of course. 100%. Yeah. So then I came off, I was only in there. So the first season of, Love Island USA was only four weeks so, um, compared to the eight weeks in the UK one. So I was on it for eight, eight nights. <clears throat> it was in Fiji. So I was away for quite some time because you had to stay in a hotel before you went. So I was away for like three and a half weeks altogether. 
And that was the longest I had stayed sober in. I was to say, how did you do that? Yeah, yeah, well, I was terrible. So long story short, I was supposed to be one of the, well, you, know, the you know, five guys, five girls go into the villa. Yeah. I was supposed to be one of the five, first five. Yeah. And then they said, oh, we're going to hold you off. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm struggling so bad, so much, like, doubt, like just no. doubting myself going into the villa. But it was because I was, you know, like, it was a mixture of things, right? It was, I, w I like, I, I wasn't used to being, um, off my, you didn't have your phone. I wasn't used to being off my phone this much. My work was my phone. I wasn't used to being sober this much, uh, or this long, this long, sorry. And then I, I just came out of a toxic relationship. It was a mixture of everything, but like I didn't know how to handle this. I was struggling mm -hmm. so much. So by the time I got into the villa, I was just like, <sighs> I was embarrassed actually watching myself on TV. I thought I did a terrible job. Um, I didn't hold myself. I didn't hold myself up to who I actually am. Like, you who know. you actually are on the inside, yeah. Yeah, absolutely not. But you, know yeah. what? you live and you learn. Like, and oh, definitely. Live and learn. All these yeah. things happen for a reason. So fast forward, I came out of the villa and then I just, I went hell for leather. I didn't give a crap about anything. I was literally, I remember I was out of the villa five days and I went to Toronto to do some media. I was doing radio shows, TV shows in the after sun. Do you remember, do you remember the, they still do it, the after sun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did that in Toronto, got flown over, put up in a hotel. I remember I went out that night and I had to fly the next day. I didn't sleep. I was partying all night, did not sleep, got onto a plane and it just continued. I went to Vegas with some clients, continued with cocaine, drinking, everything. And it just, it just kept going for months. So I got out of the villa around end of July and I remember I kept going until about October until like I... I was on my knees begging and then like I literally I had lost I think it was um I lost about twelve key twelve kg in the space of a few months, like twenty twenty something pounds, like mm -hmm. my face was gaunt, like it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, you know, my friend my friends knew I had a problem because I had some like I could tell you a billion stories here, but it's not about telling telling the stories, right? It's it's about, you know, telling telling my story, but yeah, of course. Know, hopefully to help yeah. someone. I mean, I'm sure we'd be here for weeks oh. if we shared <laughs> all of our stories. So. 100%. <laughs> I'll but it was word just, for it. <laughs> it was just that I, it just went from bad to worse. Yeah. And obviously I was trying to, I couldn't say, I couldn't say it's over. So eventually I had to stop working. And that's when the using started on my own and it just got right. even, even worse from there. So I was in and out of meetings, going to meetings and, yeah. Um, but it just wasn't working. And then, um, you know, fast forward a few months, then I had to call home and my parents knew. And eventually my brother actually flew over the day of my birthday, January 1st. So it was a continuing on from July up to January. It, it was all happening. It was relapse and relapse and relapse and getting into yeah. meetings and relapse. And then my brother came over and within five days I was back in Ireland. And right. so it was, it was in the space of five, six months, you know, I went on a reality show and then I was back in Ireland and then I was looking for... Um, a treatment center right so was, yeah so and then eventually found a treatment center in in county clare which is where i'm from southwest of yeah. ireland from like 10 minutes from my house wow uh, yeah which was That's mad so power. oh yeah. what is that it's your higher power yes yes yeah. yes Do you want like, oh no there's one just there 100 percent. Wanna... <laughs> it, it worked out so well because obviously my family could visit me so yeah. i was in the um i was in the treatment center for a month four weeks so probably probably the hardest four weeks of my life but learned a lot oh. from it yeah and then yeah. um obviously came out feeling like oh this is it and mind you this is the longest i had been sober for a long long time but i end up gay i end up going five and a half months over now at this stage when i was in rehab covid had just just started of course. i remember watching, watching the tv and hearing oh yeah we're, we're just in asia here now we were like what is covid so by the time i got out it was starting to lock down and so that was very very tough so you're going from meetings in person to then coming home and meetings online and i didn't have a job i didn't have anything so i was just, just at home with my parents so i struggled like like really really bad it was it was really tough mentally um and i i ended up relapsing so i, I got to around five five and a half months over so i ended up relapsing out the back on my own with a bottle of bottle of vodka and um yeah so that was bad that was because it was so hard because i don't i i felt like i'd done all the hard work mm. and then i was back to square one mm. even worse to where i was before i thought that's yeah. what i thought so yeah. ended up in hospital um with a mental health doctor all that and you, you would have thought right i would have got my shit together and 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 cut it out but i actually told my parents i'm going back drinking i just wanted to i felt like 
I felt like I had I had to get it out of my system even more because I even in rehab I told myself I'm never going to drink again, never going to use. But I wasn't actually 100 percent on that. Like as in I I said that I was like I'm still not sure. Do I want to give it all up? Yeah. So that's why I chose to go back out there and I I drank for. just wasn't worth it looking back at it but I'm very grateful for that because I learned so I learned so much about myself in those three to four months than I actually did in maybe not in rehab but I did then I did in my other relapses yeah because it just it was just an eye-opener I so me and two of my best friends we took we rented a camper van and drove up north it was one of the best trips I've ever I've ever done but I said to the to the guys I said, yeah, I was like this is it as I'm ready now Um, yeah, and that was the literally I came back the twenty seventh, um, September twenty twenty, and I was just like, okay, that's it. But that's that's when I actually started doing the real work. You know, I started, I had no purpose in life. I started actually finding, out, okay, what do I want to do with my life? Because I felt every time I gotten sober, like or when I came back, I wasn't doing anything. I had no purpose. Like as in, I literally was just waking up. I'd go work out. I was coming home. Like, I didn't have anything to do. Now, mind you, it was tough because it was during COVID times, right? So yeah. a, lot of people, a lot of people weren't working. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, do you know what? overall, I was very grateful for those relapses because I learned so much about myself and I learned, okay, what can I, like, I can't do this anymore. I just can't do this. I went, I actually went down to the radio. Um, I got asked to this, like, local sta station. It's like one of the top Irish stations. Mm. And they came on, they're like, oh, we want to talk about your sobriety and rehab because I started opening up on social media, right? right? But, like, this is before I decided, but, like, I was still drinking. So they were like, oh, we want to talk about Love Island and uh, your rehab because it was in the papers. It was a couple of articles in the papers. And there's me, like... It's, um, just, it's just mad what you do, isn't right, it? There's me drinking. It's just... I'm going on a radio station talking about me. No. I mean, I'm lying, like, I'm lying to everyone else, but I'm lying to myself. Whatever, yes. whatever it is, I'm lying to myself. Yeah, so, like I'm just food. I'm wasting everyone's time. I'm yeah. wasting my time. So I had to be real. Like I literally had to look yeah. at myself in the mirror and be like, "What? Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? Get your yeah. shit together." So, um, yeah, you know, I got my shit together. And was it like is sobriety? And you you know this as well. Like, is in I think people think, "Oh, he's a year sober. Our life, like life is great. Don't get me wrong. Life yeah. is the best it's ever been, but it's tough. It, it's 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 it still is tough. It's not easy. Like you still have to work." Just because, okay, I know I don't necessarily have a formula because every day
some of the um some of the comments and stuff and it's just like it's amazing how honest you've been and thank you so much really oh you're very welcome um but i just wanted to ask you actually can i say i've related to so much of what you said um i think a lot of it is uh it it crosses over into other people's stories especially like being honest Mm. with yourself and stuff like that i found it so difficult to be honest with myself um I was like so good at lying. Like I just like believed my own lies. <laughs> like it was like, but, but like I d- it got to the point where I was lying, but I didn't even know. I'm drinking. Because obviously you said you were a bit of a party boy. Yeah known for that identity which I was the same like at uni I worked in nightlife as a shot girl podium dancer like I was just like drinking all the time party party and then when I got sober I was like oh who am I? <laughs> 100% 100% and I actually forgot to say that because it was like when I got sober okay that's I think that's where where I struggled because I was like who am I? Because throughout the years I was a bartender all around drinking socializing and then obviously a promoter so like mm-hmm. That's what I was, I was doing those for years, for like yeah. literally four years before I went to the rehab. So I was like, who, I, I didn't know who I was. So as you said, like I, I lost my identity. I have a clue who I was. So I suppose I had to reinvent myself or really dig deep to who I meant to be and who I actually am. Um, because I was looking to be the best possible version of myself. And everyone, everyone, everyone is. You want to be yeah. the best possible version of yourself. So you have to dig deep. It doesn't just happen. For, for some people, it might click, light yeah. bulb. But for me, it didn't. I, I did have to dig deep. Um, that's all my purpose. And people who do follow me, my purpose is fitness and helping people. Yes. Um, yeah. So funny enough, when I came out of rehab, I remember saying to my, <laughs> said to my sister, I was like, I want to help people, you know. But I didn't know how, like, she was like, what do you mean? Yeah, I was like, I want how. to help people. But I, have yeah. to, I, I had to help myself in order to help yeah. people. Yeah. So it's so yeah. crucial, no matter what you do, if you're a teacher or care or whatever it is. Yeah. You, in order to help other people, you have to you have to help yourself. Yeah, um, that's that's what I, I find anyway. So I I, I put hundred yeah. percent in effort um, on my physical health, my mental health. Um, you know, I got into um, gratitude. I write down yeah. what I'm grateful for every day, stuff like that, little things like that, and it's building up those habits. And I've learned so much about myself, and I felt like it's kind of translated into my personal training, my online coaching as well. Yeah, uh, because I always had the social. I I, I was always a social person, so I knew. One thing I did know was I was always going to work with people. Yeah. But it was just a different type of different type yeah. of uh, job, obviously. Yeah, it's, it's than I was just doing so funny. It's, you just said then you wanted to reinvent yourself, but then you sort of changed what you said and said, well, actually, it's not really like reinvent. It's more like just find who you authentically are on the inside. Yes. Yes. And like, because you were always there, like the real you was always there. And it's yeah. that you masked it with alcohol and drugs. And I feel that it's... Um, it's not uncommon to feel like that. Like I've realized that underneath it all, I am just an 80 year old woman. Like I literally love Fair. reading. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> literally, I love reading. I'm just like, who am I? <laughs> like two years ago, Katie would be like, are you well? Uh, but you Some know, of the things I do now, happy. the things I do now, like me two years ago would have been like, what is, like, yeah. who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Completely different, like literally. Yeah. Literally, like I get up really early now, like uh, because I'm home now. Mm. Like I'm just, I'm just doing. I can work obviously with my online, but I'm not doing any PT because I'm going to be home for a little while. But I'm still getting up at seven. But even I'm like, oh, it's quite late, you know, like seven a.m. Like it's quite <laughs> oh my late. God, that's so, late. What? Yeah, but sometimes that sometimes I was getting home at seven a.m. Oh, true. Oh, that sends me under, and the lights were on the bird. Three sixty. Are you not been to sleep? But it's just like, oh no, it's not a vibe. Yeah. It's not a vibe. So I want to ask you yourself, what do you think has been your biggest challenge in sobriety? Biggest challenge is a great question. Um, do you know what? I haven't even thought. I wish you sent me these questions before. I'm sorry. <laughs> honestly, honestly. Um, my I'm biggest. No, 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 no. Do you know what? It's actually such a great question. My biggest challenge. I I think the easy answer would be alcohol but you know what like right now even the last few months i actually find it quite easy quite easy being around people drinking i suppose um i i I, and this doesn't happen often but i would doubt myself sometimes and people might be like oh you're lying but i i do and 
I suppose it's because I've been sober now for so long, right? Because in the past, I always had an excuse for something. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? So I have yeah. no excuse now for something. Like, as in, I've set goals now in life, business, personal goals that I want mm -hmm. to achieve. And I suppose I'm, I'm a bit scared of them sometimes. Do you get me? Yeah. Because, like, and obviously, I, you know, I say this to my clients as well sometimes. Like, okay, you have to write out mini goals first. I think it's great writing out big goals, but how do you get to those big goals? So you have to do your mini goals first in order yeah. to get to those big goals. So I think before, I, I, I've always done, read out my goals for the year. I've done them when I was drinking and I, you know, my drive room, I never, I was never able, but I always had that excuse. Whereas now I don't have an excuse. So sometimes that scares me. Like I, I, I still have to work on like, you know, believing in myself and being, you know, believing in what I can do and what I can, can achieve. And um, yeah, does that answer, does that answer your question? I was saying, I feel like you did prep that answer. No, no, no. I'm like, I'm like with, with my, uh, with my, with my copy in front of you. I'm like, no. <laughs> This is what I prepared earlier. No, that was so good. And I totally oh, agree. And it's not, that one was a good one because it was like about personal development. And I think that sums up sobriety so well because people think that you go sober, it's just giving up alcohol. It's just stopped yeah. taking drugs. And it's not. It's like layers and layers and layers of like unearthing yourself and learning who you are and what you want and what makes you tick and what pisses you off and learning your triggers. And it's, it's a lot of work. <laughs> It is, but it's I've, definitely I've, seen, um, I've seen quite a lot of and I'm, I'm, I'm talking like I'm, I've been sober a long long time but I felt like I've, I've learned so much and I've seen mm. a lot of people like I've been in rehab with people I've been in meetings and stuff and I've seen people who are sober at that that still aren't happy right? I'm, I'm perfect I'm not perfect no one's perfect but like like I said earlier it's all like okay I'm a year sober now but it doesn't mean the hard work is done. It's it's mm -hmm. it, that's just a big hurdle that I've jumped over. There's there's going to be so much more, big, like even bigger hurdles throughout yeah. life as well that are yeah. that sort of come at you. Yeah, Sorry? progress, not perfection. Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, but okay, I think I am ready to take on anything now because I feel like okay, a big a big hurdle. I've jumped over a yeah. big hurdle. Yeah. But, that can that can come back around. Like I've I've seen people sober four years and they've relapsed. Like do you mean? And I've asked me well, what's your favorite quote, but it just popped into my head because I was asking. It goes, um, learn from the past, look to the future, but live in the present. Love it. And it's something I have, I don't have it now, but I have it as my uh, screensaver sometimes. I kind of change my screensaver each yeah. month for a different quote. Yeah. But there was one thing um, I could never learn from the past. I always looked way too far into the future. I was never able to live in the present, right? But now I feel like, okay, past the past, you're never ever going to change from it, right? So mm -hmm. if you've done something yesterday or last week or the last month, you can't change it, so you can only learn from it. So this is what all, I always do. Okay, I like to learn from the past, which I've been learning. So whatever I did yesterday, okay, what can I just improve on today? I look to the future because it's, it's always good to look to the future because if you're not looking into the future a little bit, you're not planning ahead, right? But you don't yeah. want to look too far. So look to the future and live in the present. It's very, very hard. Now, present every day, absolutely not. But one of my addictions, right, and this is one of my main addictions, Besides cocaine and alcohol, was my phone, mm. my phone, and mm. this is one thing because my parents weren't around my addiction because I was living in New York. 
but they noticed yeah. it was my phone and they said when you're in, in the, um, the counselling meetings in rehab they said he, he's not there he's there but he's actually not yeah. there and I think this is for people tuning in here right and you might be thinking to yourself I don't have an uh, alcohol problem And I'm not being like, oh, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm addicted to my phone. Yeah. It's about, I'm addicted, yeah. <laughs> it's about being able to control that. And this is my yeah. first time home with my family in over two years, right? Um, and now, mind you, okay, my, my phone is my work, my laptop is my work. But I've been coming off that as well. I've been trying to live in the present because mm. uh, every other year, like the last time we were together was over two years ago. And I was just after Love Island and I was at my worst. Um, it was Literally, I didn't even, I barely remember the trip because I, I felt like I wasn't even there. So mm -hmm. that's just a little, um, just no, popped into my so, head. I wanted to no, share it's so that. Profound. It's so profound and it's so true. And, you know, it's like little, like we said before, it's like little habits, isn't it? Like I've got this yeah. new habit now where I'm like, do not go on your phone for the first half hour of the morning. That doesn't sound like a lot. It's actually embarrassing to say that out loud. But like the no, amount of time you very hard. <laughs> You just open your eyes and open your phone and then I'm like, yeah. oh God, like 20 minutes has gone and what a waste that was. And actually, I don't even remember what I saw. I now feel like shit because I'm comparing my life to like people that I don't even know. And it's just, it's just a neggy way to start the yeah. day. I'm not about that life anymore. So no, it's guess, um, good yeah, point. Little good habits point. to build in, especially with the gratitude. I'm all for that. I would say some weeks I would do five, five, six days a week. And yeah. this week, because today I choose it. So I've done it once this week now, but yeah. it's easier. It's easier because I'm at home and I have so much more to write yeah. for. But I actually struggle. I struggle finding what I'm grateful for. Because I, when I first started doing, um, writing down what I'm grateful for, I thought it had to be the biggest things in the world, right? I thought I was like, oh, because every day I was like, oh, I'm another day is over. And there was this guy, his name is Brian Penny. He's, he's, um, he was an addict for 10 years heroin addict like so he helped me quite a lot i did a i did a live with him on the radio but his story is incredible 10 years heroin addict and then he wow. uh, turned his whole life around he's now he's eight years sober he's a he's um wow. he does lectures in colleges around in Ireland. it's mad but he had told me he's like you know sometimes it could be the smallest things in the world like literally a roof over my head yeah. socks on on your feet yeah. And he said, look, it's small. So start small and then eventually grow. Because when I first started doing it, I was like, oh, it has to be like the biggest things ever. Oh, I'm grateful because I ran 10K. It doesn't have to be that. Yeah. Like start, start small. It's like anything. It's like going to the gym. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're going to be benching 100 kg or you're going to be running yeah. for an hour. On a track. You start small. Small wins, yeah. small wins. Daily habits. Daily habits, definitely. I love that. What a takeaway. Thank you so much. That's great. Um, and I just want to ask you as well, Yes. Just to end on a very positive note. What is your favourite thing about sobriety? What's the best thing that you've learned on your journey? If you can uh, pick, I know there's hundreds. <laughs> do you know what, right? My and I've, I've definitely said this, but um, I suppose being able to because one thing that really hurt me was um, I hurt, because I hurt so many people through my addiction was not being not being I'm not being present with my family. So yeah. one thing now that I take away is I'm, I'm like, I said it to my friend, I'm like, Joanne, I'm here. Like I'm actually here with my family this time and it's the best thing ever. And it's actually such a great feeling. So um, like the real me is here because mm. I was lost for years. Um, so I just, ah, there's, Joanne, there's so much, there's so many things, like there's so many things. Um, I'm able to, I'm able to look, look down the line on a few months. Like I'm planning what I'm doing in the new year now. I was never able to do that. Just it's small things like, but do, do you know what? I'll leave you on this. And this is a small thing, right? Um, I used to get really, really bad anxiety. And I, it was all because of lack of sleep and, and, and alcohol and drugs. But yeah. I'm obsessed with sleeping. Like, I love sleep. <laughs> I know it's like it's so small. Like, I'm, I'm so grateful to get to bed with a clear head and wake up yeah. with a fresh head. Like, it's, I'm tell, it, there's no better feeling. And I love swimming as well. I want to throw it in there because anyone who follows me knows I love swimming. I love 
going in. I love going into the cold water. I just went for a swim last week down the coast. I'm obsessed. Yeah. With it. It's great. Like I've done, I'm, I've done probably nearly all the drugs in the world, right? Except everything except needles. And I hate, I hate saying that, but I've done nearly all the drugs in the world. <laughs> Nothing beats the best. One of the best highs of my life is jumping into cold water. Oh, so I ever. did my first ever cold water swim last week. Yeah. We went to Northumbria with my family. And How was that? <laughs> I, I, must, I did cheat a little bit because I did have a wetsuit on. That's okay. It's a start. Okay. Remember, Thank you. remember it's, it's a wins. start. Small wins start small mini goals, see? There you go. So I went in the I North Sea and it was exhilarating. It was great. It's unbelievable. Like, mm. I did it in January, would you believe? Like, January is like one of the coldest months ever. I did yeah. it there for my birthday. I was like, this is the best thing ever. But anyway, I know maybe, I, did I answer your question there? I gave you a few small answers, <laughs> but I could go on, I could go on for, for days. But I suppose just being, in, um, being in the present, like, isn't this is, I've been home a week now with my family and it's, oh, it's been just amazing, like, absolutely amazing. Good. And I was I'm never so able to do that before. And I'm able to do it sober and I'm able to, you know, actually have a full conversation about how I'm feeling, about how my parents are feeling, my brothers yeah. are, Do you know what I mean? I'm able to... You're there for people. Um, yeah, loads of answers yeah. there, but I can't pinpoint one answer because there's not just one answer. There's there's hundreds. Yeah, and that's it. There is, and that's amazing as well for people to know that there are hundreds. Do it yourself and find out yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, and for anyone for anyone that is watching this and is like, oh, I need to give up alcohol and drink, or alcohol or drugs or whatever, cigarettes, like. A small win so if your takeaway from this would be small win so you gotta it doesn't happen it doesn't happen overnight you gotta take it day by day week by week but just um start small Rome wasn't built in a day so everything you're, that we've talked about you can't do it all at once because I'm a year sober you're two years sober now I still struggle to get up at the same time every day uh, without looking at my phone and journaling and gratitude list everything like that I fail at that daily but it's mm -hmm. a work in progress you gotta learn you got to learn yeah. every day and take it into the next day. Yeah. Amen. Love it. Thank you so much. What a joy. Like, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Appreciate oh, you. very you. welcome. Congratulations on your sobriety. Yes. And enjoy thank your you. time with your family. How special. What a blessing. Oh, unreal. See ya. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.